Um, so this is our first session and last session of the of the semester on our um, communicative approach series. And today we have the pleasure to have three uh, presenters with three very interesting presentations. Um, we have uh, Jackie Cohen Steinberg, um, Rania Benamor, and um, sorry if I hope I will not mispronounce your name. I think it's uh, Xiang. Uh, Xiang? Yes. Jan, yes. Um, presenting with us today. So uh, we are going to uh, listen to our three presenters um, and then we will open up the floor for questions and activities. So we make sure everyone um, is actually presenting. Um, so we're going to start with Jackie, then Hanya, and then Sean. Okay. Um, so Jackie, um, if if you want to start, so Jackie is an associate professor of teaching in Spanish uh, with the Department of Latin American and Iber uh, Iberian Cultures. She has been at USC for 10 years teaching uh, language courses as well as a GSEM. And her interests are in sexuality and gender in Spanish Golden Age literature, and more specifically in theater and short stories. So today she's going to present on music as a communicative tool in a language class classroom. So Jackie, whenever you're ready, I think you can share your screen. There you go. Okay, cool. Thank you. Can you guys see all that? Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming. I also put the, um, the link to these Google slides in the chat. I don't know if everyone got it, um, but um, if you wanted to follow along, either way, if there's links, I'll probably put them in the chat as well. Um, so today, yeah, today I want to talk about music as a communicative tool in the language classroom. Um, what I wanted to do first actually is start off with um, a Miro board so that we could do something kind of as a group. Um, I think some of you have probably used Miro boards before. I don't know if everyone has, um, but the link is on the first slide and I'll actually put this in the chat again. Um, and it's actually kind of a way that everyone can there it is. Um, everyone can contribute. Uh, so if we go here um, to the Miro board, does everyone see it? Has everyone been able to kind of get in? Um, there should be, when you get in there, there's a toolbar on the left. So you can kind of either uh, write a text box or you can use a sticky note, you can draw, you can write anything you want. Um, I kind of just want to start with a question, like how is music communicative? What do you think when you think of music? How do you feel when you hear your favorite song, singer, artist? Um, and so you guys can write whatever you want. You can put a picture, whatever it is. I'll give you guys like, I don't know, two minutes to do that. And then we can kind of talk about this. <laughs> I just kind of started it off with some pictures and um, about music as poetry. A lot of people think music is poetic. The lyrics are poetic. <laughs> some artists So, um, so does anyone kind of want to share what they wrote on here? Because it doesn't say who wrote what. So does anyone want to kind of share maybe what they're thinking or what they wrote? Um, I said that, sorry for my voice, but um, I said <laughs> that music can help express thoughts and emotions that are hard to articulate. So mm -hmm. sometimes <clears throat> it's hard if you just said, what do you think? Um, it's sort of hard to start that flow, but sometimes mm -hmm. music sort of helps that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's something in the chat. Um, oh, <laughs> David's on the phone. Um, yeah, um, perfect. Anything else? Um, I wrote that music can be soothing and entertaining at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has a um, definitely, on people. Definitely soothing, entertaining. Um, it can be hard, exactly what's hard to articulate. There's emotions expressed through song, right? So there's a lot of different things that go on through music. Um, and so the idea was for me really why music, this whole thought of why use music in the classroom. And, um, you know, it's a medium that students already love and enjoy. 
Um, and so I figured why not use it to create a fun environment, but while also working on um, reading comprehension, listening comprehension, writing and speaking, kind of all the things that are useful in a language classroom. Um, and then thanks to a grant from the CLC last semester, I was able to create activities for my Spanish three courses um, revolving around music. Um, and the questions that I answered or wanted to answer were, could music activities in the target language help students engage in the language in a more creative way? Um, could these activities improve students' writing skills on exams and other written exercises? Could these activities help students perform better on listening comprehension or on reading comprehension tasks? And finally, could the students create their own song and incorporate it into their class presentation at the end of the semester? And they did in their presentations, they each had a slide with a song that they wrote related to the topic in Spanish. So it was really fun to watch. And I had a student actually sing the song in front of the class. So um, it created a lot of, um, it was fun. It was a really fun e experience for the students. Um, and so just to kind of get an idea, I gave um, surveys at the end of the semester to kind of get feedback from the students. And um, they all seemed to enjoy the activities. Um, did you enjoy the activities? Pretty much they all said yes. One said it was so-so because it didn't help with a couple of chapters. But in general, everyone said yes. Um, then did the song activities and the writing of song lyrics help with your writing skills? Um, pretty much they all said yes. One of them said it didn't help with the writing, but it was a fun activity. So they still enjoyed the activity. Um, but in general, they all said that it helped with writing because they could help, they could follow the rhythms and the phrases in the song. Um, and it pertained to the grammar unit in a lot of cases. So they could use the grammar kind of in a more creative, exciting way. Um, and then finally, I asked, did you find that listening to Spanish language music in class helped you with listening comprehension activities? And they all said yes. So it was definitely useful for listening comprehension. Um, so especially because I said the actual, oh, I'm sorry, um, the actual audio would be much easier since the music was more difficult. So they found the songs to be difficult. So then the audio on the exams was easier. And so that was kind of also my, my point to make the exams a little easier for them. Um, so if you look here, uh, like a lot of you had said, music is communicative in and of itself. It expresses emotion. It expresses ideas. Um, the singer communicates thoughts and emotions through his or her lyrics. Um, they also discuss social issues, personal issues, political issues, um, anything of importance to the singer or band, anything that's going on in their culture and their life. And um, the melody also brings about emotions. You know, if you ever heard a, you know, kind of a sad song, you know, can make you emotional. Um, and uh, I found this excerpt on Johns Hopkins Medicine actually about keep your brain young with music. And it says, if you wanna firm up your body, head to the gym. If you wanna exercise your brain, listen to music. There are a few things that stimulate the brain the way music does. If you wanna keep your brain engaged throughout the aging process, listening to or playing music is a great tool. It provides a total brain workout. And then the last part is really interesting. It says research has shown that listening to music can reduce anxiety, blood pressure, and pain as well as improve sleep quality, mood, mental alertness, and memory. So given the rise of anxiety these days in our students uh, that we see all the time, <laughs> um, music seems to be kind of a great way to teach material in a less stressful manner and kind of in a way to make it uh, a little more relaxing. Um, so what I did um, in my classes was I created IPA activities. Um, I think most of us are familiar with IPA activities. But um, if not, they have three modes of communication for a standard-based um, classroom instruction that we use. Um, and these are interpretive, interpersonal, and presentational. And so the interpretive tasks of the activity were where the students had to listen to a song, they had to complete lyrics, um, they had to, um, then they use that text, which becomes an authentic text in the target language to answer reading comprehension questions. The interpersonal part was where the students worked in groups together on some sort of cultural component. They created their own song lyrics as well. Um, and then presentational, they had to present their work to the class. So after they collaborated, they presented. Uh, and so all of these activities were based on a song. I did one per chapter, depending on the material or the topic of the chapter. So what I'm gonna show you guys today is just an example of what I did for the last chapter of our Spanish three courses, which is politics and social issues. That's always the last chapter. So it's, they're tired. They don't want to do anymore. Um, it's also the hardest chapter because it's politics and no one wants to talk about that. So um, uh, for this one, I chose a song by the Mexican rock group Mana, who um, they do a lot of political, social commentary in their songs. 
So um, I have an exa example here on this on this link, if you can click on it um, to um, just to show you what the activity looks like. And I'm going to sh uh, share it here. Can everyone see that? Um, so this is what the activity looked like, just a full activity. Um, I usually put a picture at the top of some sort of representation. Um, and then usually there's a pre-listening section with some questions, um, just general questions that don't even require the use, any knowledge of the song or the singer. Um, then I usually put a vocab section because it is in another language, it's usually very difficult. So I try to pick song uh, words that the students may not know. Um, then there's a listening section with song lyrics where they would have to fill out lyrics you know, as they're listening. Um, then there's a listening comprehension section, which after they're done with the lyrics, this becomes a text that they then use to, uh, um, to answer questions. So true, false, in our case, that's how we do our exams. So that's why I choose that to practice. And then the last part is actually a Google Doc section where the students collaborate in groups. They do all this in groups and then that's where they write their song lyrics and everything. This is like the post listening. So this is kind of just a uh, kind of like how it looks. I'm gonna just go through each section on these slides, um, kind of break it down a little bit. So for the pre-listening section, it kind of sets up the activity, right? So the first, I, the first thing is that you have to pick the song. <laughs> Um, and the song has to be something that, um, you know, has some sort of relation with what you're doing in class, not just a song you love. <laughs> um, so um, because this was social issues and politics, I chose this song from Mana, as I mentioned, the song is called, oops, sorry, um, Justice, Land and Liberty, uh, which encompassed a lot of, they talk about problems in Mexico, they talk about just general problems in the world. Um, it also had a lot of vocabulary from the chapter, so I thought that was a good one. Um, and you kind of have to think about what are the what are what is the purpose of this activity? Are you trying to get vocabulary? Are you trying to get grammar, culture, all of the above? And that kind of all helps when you're trying to choose a song. Um, and then the idea is to pull basically to include two or three general questions about the topic, uh, things that don't necessarily require um, knowing about the artist or the singer, but just pulling from previous knowledge. And then a set, as I said, a vocab section. So. Um, for this activity, I chose to ask, what are the most important social political problems today? Is there a solution? And then look at the title of the song. What will the theme be? What does the photo above show? So they don't need to have any knowledge of the singer or the song to do this part. It's just what social problems do we know about? What will the theme be? And with the will question, they, we were practicing the future tense, which we had been doing in class. Um, so it kind of just pulls from previous knowledge here. Um, then for the listening section, um, the listening section, as I mentioned, has song lyrics typed out. Um, usually the blanks for the song lyrics are vocab words that are in the chapters. There may be grammar parts that we've already done um, that we're focusing on. Um, also, the focus of this section is to help listening comprehension skills through an authentic video in the target language. It also introduces the, the students to a singer they may not know or to like um, the culture they may not know. They may not know a lot about Mexican history or Mexican culture. Um, and so usually with this, as I showed, this is an example of one of the stanzas of the song by Bana. Um, so here's the Spanish portion. And then these blanks here are what I had taken out of the song for them to fill in. So like it says, brothers and sisters of other races, of other skin color in the same heart, you pray and pray and nothing works out. That's why we need to make this revolution of love. We are demanding all the respect, respect to the indigenous person and his dignity. Via has already said it, Zapata also. So here you also have cultural um, references to Via and Zapata. They may not know who they are. So that's great because then we can do part, we can do something with that. Um, and they have to film the lyrics. So what I was gonna do is show you guys um, just like one minute of the song of the video because we'll watch the video while we're filling in lyrics. Um, and curious to see if while you're listening to this part, if you would be able to fill those lyrics in, if you think it's hard or not. No, especially for those who maybe don't speak Spanish in this group or aren't native Spanish speakers. Um, so I'm going just to that one, the part of that song. Can everyone see the video? Hopefully we can hear it too. Let me know if you can't hear it. i 
I don't know, do the visual cues help at all? I know the students, the um, visual really helps. The videos are fun and they and they it helps them a lot with understanding like what's going on in the song. Um, this is a video I think that someone put together. It's not like an official because they're at a concert, but usually there's like an official video, which makes it a little easier. Um, did you find that like challenging filling in those lyrics? Maybe those who don't speak Spanish <laughs> or it was not too bad. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, he sings pretty clearly, but some of the singers are a lot faster and it's hard. Um, so it's difficult for them. It's not an easy task. Um, so I do try to pick words that maybe we have gone over or like agamos is subjunctive, which we had been doing in class. Um, and these words like respeto and indio are similar to English. So try to pick words that are like kind of more, um, you know, suited for maybe the level. Depends on the level you're doing as well. Um, and so then um, post listening, um, I, as I mentioned, there would be a reading comprehension section uh, with true false, you can do open answer, you can do multiple choice, whatever you kind of feel like. Um, the song lyrics are now an authentic text that you use. And so the students reread the text for a few minutes, then they answer the questions. They have to use critical thinking skills at this point too. They're basically analyzing a text, which is uh, um, also difficult for them. No? Um, so for example, in this kind of, in this stanza that we saw before, what kinds of questions you think or what kind of statements could you put in a reading comprehension? Any ideas? <laughs> now with the reading comprehension, I try to make the questions kind of more straightforward, not super difficult because it's already hard. <laughs> um, but, you know, like something I had included was, you know, for example, the singer uh, says that there's, it, there's equality all over the world or the singer um, you know, demands equality for the indigenous groups, you know, something pretty obvious, but might not be for, you know, learners, you know, um, does anyone have any questions or, or like uh, statements that they would maybe ask for something like this <laughs> for like reading comprehension? Maybe something like what is the singer demanding? Yeah. If you <clears throat> want to do like an open question, you could do something like that. Exactly. It doesn't have to be true, false. It can be kind of whatever you want. But yeah, something a little more, you know, obvious, just kind of do you understand the reading? Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, the post listening, and that's when they group works together. This is the most collaborative and communicative portion of the activity. Um, and so this is when we use Google Docs, so everyone kind of works together. Um, and this is where we focus on writing presentational skills, um, speaking skills. Um, and so uh, I wanted to just show you what that activity looks like uh, in my um, in this activity, and there's the link to it as well. This is what the group activity look like. Um, and if I go down, this is with my students' answers. If I go down to the bottom, no one wrote here, so um, I have all the translations here into English. So basically, this is kind of a more open interpretive area. So what references to Mexican history do you see in the song? look up information online. So I had them do some research in groups about who was Villa, who was Zapata, you know, Mexican history. So I brought in, this is where you bring in kind of the culture. Um, I also asked them here, look at the lyrics of the song. What form are these verbs in? So we talked about the conditional, which was part of the chapter. Um, and then finally, the singer wants to write more of the song to offer solutions for the future of his country. Continue the song using the subjunctive or the future. So here I put the kind of chorus and then they had to continue the lyrics using um, the grammar. So we see here some of them wrote like Mexico, Mexico será libre. And, you know, they started using future tense. Um, they started, they're trying to get, you know, Mexico will be free. We will not be poor. We will not be hungry. You know, and they're trying to get very poetic with it. Um, in this one up here, it's like las guerras, la tierra. They try to rhyme too. So it's kind of fun. They, they had a lot of fun with the lyrics. Um, and it's very creative. It's a creative way to write. So um, yeah, so uh, I thought that kind of for this session, we could do kind of a group activity where we kind of make up, um, where we make, uh, kind of put together our own activity kind of thing like this. Um, and Jennifer, it's okay to do that now or do you want me to do that later? <laughs> How long did you say it was gonna take? Oh, well, I mean, it can take as long as we want. We obviously don't have to do the whole thing. It's just um, to kind of get an idea of, um, you know, since I'm just talking about how I set it up, kind of to, yeah. for us to do kind of our own, you know? Yeah, I guess we can just do it for like five minutes. Maybe. Okay, okay. 
Um, so um, we, I, so what I wanted to do here is focus on social issues and politics, kind of like what we did with the Mana song, since that's what we were talking about. And then this is all can be done on a Google Doc, so everyone can kind of contribute to it. So in case you can't get to it, here's the link for that. Um, and uh, oh, let me send it to okay. everyone. Here we go. Did everyone get that? Mm -hmm. So, so what I thought we could do is um, do a song, uh, pick a song by Taylor Swift. I don't know if everyone likes Taylor Swift around here, but um, she is um, making headlines right now. She's super popular. The students love her. She's very relevant to them. So I figured for something like this, this would be a good one. Plus she's an advocate for women's empowerment, um, LGBTQIA plus rights. And so she, um, you know, she's a good one to kind of work with, especially to do a song in English. Um, you like Arania? <laughs> yeah, she's fun. <laughs> um, so uh, if we go to that Google doc that I have, so um, I just kind of, what I did was kind of put everything down like in the sections it would be. And so I have two songs here that I think would be good for social issues or politics. So what I was gonna have you guys do is kind of read through both of the lyrics. So this is that you need to calm down from 2019. And this is Antihero, which is from her brand new album right now. They played on the radio like every 10 minutes. So you've probably heard this one, <laughs> but um, if you guys could just take a minute to kind of read the lyrics. And then if you can, if you want, just put down here, whichever song you kind of think is better you can just write here, um, you know, what would some opening questions be? What would some um, vocab maybe be that would be difficult if you were, let's say an English learner? Um, and you guys can just kind of write here under each title or whatever. Okay, yeah, a couple minutes. <laughs> And of course, if anyone has comments, you can always yell it out as well. It doesn't have to be written down. I don't care either way. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Does anyone have any thoughts about maybe like, um, yeah, questions or um, statements for reading comprehension or any of those? Well, is there, is one song better than the other? Does anyone think for us for like a, a social issue chapter or politic chapter? I mean, I thought a lot of it has to do with like the level of the students too. Um, this song is a little, I think simpler um, in terms of maybe what she's saying. It's a little more, um, I don't know, in my opinion, obvious, I don't know of what she's saying. This is a little bit, this has vocabulary. It's a little bit more difficult, I think. Um, if I were, let's say an English learner, but I don't know what you guys think. <laughs> 
Although I'm, I'm struck by glad in the first um, mm -hmm. song, because obviously when you hear that, you're going to assume it's happy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but then seeing the lyrics, um, it's referencing, I don't know. Um, yeah. Exactly sure of what the. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's like gay and lesbian, lesbian alliance. alliance. Yeah. But I don't know the rest of it. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that's a really big clue probably as yeah. to what this is about but you don't really get that by just listening right right so for that one you would probably not be able to have them fill in that word because they wouldn't know um the the thing is the video helps a lot if you watch this video um it there's a lot of visual clues of of um there's um I think there's a gay wedding at some point and there's like there's a lot of visual clues of what she's talking about um in this song so this is definitely um a very good song for social issues um you know so this song you know she's kind of talking about she's talking about almost in a way of bullying on social media which is a big topic she's talking about twitter um she's talking about um gay rights She's talking about all these kinds of things. Um, in this song, it's more um, depression. She talks about depression. She talks about, um, uh, she talks about, oh, about uh, body image and not feeling like, you know, she's, you know, she feel like she said, I'm a monster on the hill. Like she's, you know, not worthy of, of you know, everyone's sexy and I'm not type of thing. So I kind of, it kind of depends to which topics you want to focus on in class. So if you are working on a certain topic, one song would be better than the other, but you could use either one, right? So that's what's a, what's so fun about music. You can pick different types, but this was definitely, and you could definitely talk about glad mental health challenges. You could even start with what is an antihero? Um, you know, what do you think an antihero is when you hear it with the word antihero? What do you think of? Uh, are there any examples in literature, any examples in, in movies? You can have them relate to movies. Um, and so this whole idea of anti-hero is also kind of a big topic that you can work on. Um, and so song lyrics, again, would be either vocab, grammar. Um, there's a lot of, I noticed contractions in these songs, like it's, it is, can't, cannot, those things. So if you're doing something like that, you could have them fill those in. You could do present tense verbs, um, any sort of, you know, thing like that. Um, and then basically, other than that, um, big we kind of talk big picture questions, you know, cultural questions. What kinds of social issues is she referring to? Um, what does she discuss? You know, that kind of thing. And then lastly would be the writing of the lyrics, <laughs> which is kind of the fun part of the whole activity, you know, but I know we kind of are slow, low on time. So um, I don't know if, you know, I was gonna have you guys write lyrics, but I don't know if we have time. <laughs> I don't think we'll have time okay, now. Maybe perfect. after um, after the other two presenters uh, presented, we might have some time. Okay. Um, we'll yeah. See. No. So um, that's it. Uh, I, if um, you know, if we have questions, we can uh, talk about the end. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jackie, for your uh, presentation. That was very uh, insightful and very useful. And using music is always, you know, for us as instructors, but also for students, it's always something that we we enjoy doing. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your, your activities with us. Um, so now we are moving from music, but still talking about text and literature with uh, Rania who is um, a full-time lecturer of French in the French and Italian department. Uh, she's a Paris Sorbonne graduate and a Boston College graduate. She's currently teaching French 3, and her research focuses on foreign language acquisition, pedagogy of teaching French as a foreign language, uh, narrativity and reception theory in literature. Um, her presentation joins her passion for teaching languages and her interest in uh, literature theories. And she is going to present uh, on um, Albert Camus, The Stranger. Anya. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. That will allow me a minute to share my screen. So I'll be talking about uh, teaching literature through communicative approach. Um, and um, I will be talking first about why literature in a foreign language um, classroom. Second, I will be talking particularly about The Stranger of Albert Camus, the novel, uh, and why, what particularity that this novel offers to a foreign language classroom. And then I'll be giving some examples of communicative activities. 
Um, so to start, why literature? Um, it's uh, because it offers learners uh, the ability to work on authentic linguistic and sociolinguistic and cultural material. Um, it will uh, give them the ability to develop their languages, their language while appreciating literature, literary work, um, especially when they know that this work is um, highly renewed uh, because the novel we're working on is a novel um, is a is a Nobel Prize uh, winning novel. Um, learners will also have the ability to learn um, denotative and connotative uh, meaning and will uh, be uh, in touch with the different layers of uh, the text and different meanings and different depth of, of the um, uh, text. They will also have the ability to identify specific expressions, uh, metaphors, and uh, those uh, different kinds of expressions from li the literary work, which will may not be found in other subjects. Um, now, Why the Stranger by Albert Camus, as I mentioned, it's like the Nobel um, Prize winning, uh, which um, stimulates the interest of students to read it. It's also um, the second most translated novel uh, in the French language after The Prince. Um, that also very motivating and encouraging for students to read it and to um, and, and stimulates the interest in the novel. Um, so what is it about? It's about uh, the protagonist um, called Murso. He's fading the absurdity of life. Um, to him, all the events that occur in the novel are meaningless and are faced by his um, indifference. So he's indifferent from the beginning till almost the end of the novel. Um, his indifference is such that he kills an Arab because of the sun. Um, he goes through 12 months trial without showing any interest, any um, involvement. And he faces the death the, the death penalty without any reaction and without any explanation. So the topic of the novel is already very heavy, very very shocking, and already stimulating for the students. They want to um, they want to figure out why he's not reacting. What's the explanation of his actions and the explanation of, of his no no reaction? Um, so before reading the novel, we um, we already um, we have like a we only read the introduction um, and they can tell that the personality and the attitude are very shocking very provocative um, as they counter the social norms and the ordinary um, especially when we uh, do not have any explanation or justification of the actions so the the particularity of the personality of the protagonist and the absurdity of his actions offer the perfect ground for the conversation and stimulate the discussion in class. Why he's doing that, why he's not doing that, um, et cetera. So uh, I'll be giving some examples of communicative um, class activities. So before reading the novel at home, because we will be reading uh, the chapter at home, each um, session we will be reading a chapter at home, and then we will be coming to class to um, work on it. Before reading the chapter at home, in the first contact with the novel, we read the first page of the of the novel in class. So it starts with, Maman died today, or yesterday maybe, I don't know. I got a telegram from the home, mother deceased, funeral tomorrow, faithfully yours. That doesn't mean anything. Maybe it was yesterday. So we can notice that the beginning of the novel uh, is already very shocking and very um, stimulating and it activates and motivates um, the students to continue the reading of, of the novel to understand why. So for this first session, um, I, I start the conversation, I moderate the conversation. So I have like different reactions from the students and some of some are laughing, others are surprised and some others are indifferent. Um, so we start questioning why, what's the reason of those like reactions? Uh, is it normal to, to have this kind of reaction when, when a death of the mom is announced? Is it abnormal? Uh, what, is, what is normal? Like how to define normal? Um, in comparison to what a normal person would do. Oh, and I would ask them, 
um, what would like someone like a random person would do uh, would react to the announcement of his mom's death oh they would cry they would um, um, gather with the families etc so we contrast those two attitudes um, we try to find answers why Mursault the protagonist acted as such um, some student would say oh he's crazy others would say oh he's autist um, in like reference to that his like the actions are not aligned with with his emotions um, others would justify it by oh he's still in denial it's still like the first contact with the with the news he still doesn't show any emotions um, others would say he's a sociopath or drunk or whatever. So the first uh, the first session is like very um, they're intrigued by the by the reaction by the reaction of the um, of the of Murso, the protagonist, but they are still like trying to find justification, um, and they are um, it it like motivates them to continue the reading of the novel uh, to understand why. Um, we would also um, discuss the definition of normal, what's normal and what's not normal and why isn't it not, why is it not normal to not cry or to not react uh, to uh, the death of a mom um, and to negotiate the definition of normal in contrast with the norm is okay maybe it's normal but it's not the social norm and now we like switch to talking about the social norm and who creates the social norm and is the social norm normal so it creates a lot of debate in the class and it's um a good introduction to the novel um now a second uh another uh example of the activity is challenging the cultural references of the students now that we are diving uh, more in depth in the novel um, to stimulate interest and to show uh, how the novel is culturally and literally relevant in consonance with, uh, with the learning or young learners' cultural background, especially that we are dealing with uh, students. Um, I mean, the students are young learners between 18 and 21, 22. Um, so it's motivating to um, put it in contrast with their cultural and modern cultural reference, um, which allows personal involvement in cultural enrichment. Uh, they can draw from the novel and relate it to their personal background. So in class, the students are very encouraged to find similarities with their modern cultural references. Um, for for instance, their personal life events, uh, Greek mythology. We they find like a, a high interest in like uh, finding um, references with Oedipus, with Sisyphus. How meaningless their actions are, or how uh, their relationship to their uh, like um, Sisyphus to his like his pushing the rock, and how it's meaningless, and how the actions of Mursu in this novel are also meaningless, or to Oedipus and his relationship to his father and to his mom. Um, we also um, um, uh, we also like talk about some pop culture reference, and students are also are always um impressing me by finding references with drake songs or kendrick lamar songs um or taylor swift songs and uh it's it's motivating and again it's very involving and encouraging to um communicate um in in french so for the first example um we are talking about uh whether Murso is the main character is a hero or anti-hero um, because he's leading the action, but in a very passive way and barely reacting to his surroundings and to the events that are happening around him, like the death of his mom or the death of the Arab that he will kill later. So he he's leading the action, but not really uh, reacting to them. Or maybe the actions he's leading, he's doing that in a very passive way. So they we always mention the the video clip anti-hero of Tyler Swift um and she defines she, she's trying to define anti-hero in a very um in a modern way in a contrast with it with um with like modern um issues like depression all of that which is very relevant to students um and they love talking about it 
Um, and they are also encouraged to find references or similarities between the video clip, the lyrics, and the the novel. Uh, and especially when when she says, "I'll start, I'll stare directly to the sun, but never to the mirror." And they find it very interesting because when Murso, the protagonist, killed the Arab, he says, "Oh, I did it because of the sun." So he's always he's looking to the sun in in his never looking to the picture of himself. He's never evaluating his actions and he hasn't and he doesn't have any self-awareness um she also mentions at some point i'm the monster on the hill and uh here students would like make a reference oh Murso is also a monster he's a killer uh he's a stranger to the society he's different he's a strange he's an outsider so he can be assimilated to a monster um so this is very interesting because it's uh they are like obsessed with taylor swift and they find a lot of uh, a lot of uh, references and they enjoy this activity um also by the ending of the novel students are debating what the about the death penalty since Murso his face to death to death he's sentenced with death penalty um uh so he's he's not paying any, any attention to his trial um, I ask students, does he seem to regret his actions or he doesn't regret his actions? And of course he doesn't. And they try to find like the references to the text that shows that he doesn't care. And here we have comparison to the French song, Je ne regrette de rien. Oh, I don't regret anything. And um, when when they mentioned this, I was I was surprised myself of how many similarities we have uh, with this song. Um, so their cultural references are activated, actualized, and re-evaluated in a new context, a new perspective. Um, another example of the communicative approach or of, of the same of like challenging their cultural references, um, they always find it interesting to compare with the Joker, Murso, uh, the 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 main character of the novel, how he didn't care about him his mom and how the Joker killed his mom. So it's almost the same thing, metaphorically speaking, um, and how the Joker doesn't break the social norms and how Murso is doing the same thing. So it's very um, challenging for them um, to find the similarities. Also, we talked about this during Halloween. So they loved. Uh, the similarities. I I started the conversation. Oh, what do you think? Uh, Murso would 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 what would the costume of Murso would be? Do you think? Uh, would he like play the game of society? Would he play the game of Halloween? And what would be his character? And some of them said the Joker, and I was like, oh, great idea, because we will be talking about that right um right now, and we brought out this conversation. Um. Another example or another uh, way to encourage them to um, engage them with the, with the novel is through gamification. Uh, the novel is very easily gamified uh, as it offers like a different, um, is, is very easily manipulated. So I always use Play Factil. You may be familiar with the platform. Uh, it offers different kind of activities as flashcards or um, matching memory board or a geo party. And I think their favorite ever is the geo party because I'll be asking uh, questions just like the the TV shows, and they will be um, very competitive about answering the questions. And I do this especially at the at the beginning of chapters and by the end of the chapters just to um, just to put their or to evaluate their um understanding uh of 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 the novel of or of that specific chapter um yeah which leads me to the end of my uh, presentation thank you very much for for your attention thank you uh Rania. thank you for all of these very interesting um activities on l'étranger and we can also use on different texts. Um, so now we are going to listen to our last uh, presenter of the day, and it's uh, Xiang, who is going to 
also present on texts, maybe not so much on literature, but um, on storytelling at least. So um, he's a Chinese lecturer in the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures at USC. And his research interests focus on um, ta uh, task-based project teaching, the teaching of modern Chinese literature, uh, such as Chinese poetry, fiction, prose, Chinese grammar, and vocabulary acquisition. And the title of his presentation is Once Upon a Time in, and then Storytelling in Lower Level Language Courses. Great. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. So first, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can you see? Can you all see? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to keep it short and uh, precise. Uh, first, um, I'm going to talk about the background of my topic today. Uh, so, um, there's uh, always talking about because Chinese language is difficult. For example, uh, it, it takes students two years from novice level to intermediate mid level. And then uh, another big difference is between the, the novice level, students can only produce like words, phrases, or memorized uh, phrases. And uh, the intermediate students, they can like achieve a little bit higher level. So such as they can produce sentences or connected sentences. So I was wondering, um, because students, uh, we always talk about why students cannot produce like a longer sentences in intermediate level. It is because probably we don't teach. What about if we teach them how to use the connectors, how to use a logic model to, 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 to help them to produce longer sentences? and then what's the things and how uh, what's the results gonna be uh, look like is there any differences if we teach them how to do that so I was uh, wondering to do that so this semester I used a little bit new uh, teaching method to teach my Chinese two students so now uh, here is the story uh, telling so um, there's a definition about the storytelling for example uh, some there are about uh, the storytelling is all about creativity and production so students need needs students needs to use their uh, to create their own language and then produce in the sentence level or in the in the to tell people a story so here is about why we use storytelling uh, it can improve students general language profi proficiency by studies different studies are uh, uh, result and uh, also it can increase effect effectiveness uh, effectiveness of teaching and also it can foster communication and uh, interaction in the classroom okay so uh, now i'm going to talk about what are the elements of a great story because there are so many things happen in a story so and specifically uh students are in chinese too in, in a very basic level so for example if we we're asking them to tell about what's going on in the movie once upon a time in America. So probably they can talk about too many things in English, but in Chinese, maybe they can only talk about, oh, there are several people and then they are Americans or they live in New York, maybe that's it. So how can we uh, help them to produce longer uh, sentences by in, in what method? So this is the things I want to um, uh, figured it out and then because students are they have a very limited profi proficiency level so we need something to guide our curriculum our uh, teaching um, design so first thing I want to say is the can do st statement so I will always use the can do statement to uh, guide me to guide my teaching uh, uh, designing and also there are the three modes of communication. So for the can-do statement, so for example, for a specific day of class, I will, my goal is to help students achieve to talk about uh, uh, the can-do statement. For example, in the specific day, uh, the can-do statement, it's uh, I can identify a recurrence of an action which has already happened. So this is my uh, core um, uh statement today so I want I will I will ask my student to achieve this and also I will use the three modes of communication way uh, method to guide them to to either interact with other students or to in in to understand to analyze what's the meaning about the the, the story and also to how to present the story 
Okay, and another thing is about what are the elements of a great story? Uh, so I have several things, several questions to ask first. So the first one, it's very important. Is it relevant? So when we design activities, so we we, sh we need to make sure the activities are relevant to students, uh, their personal experiences. If it is not relevant, then students may ask, why am I doing this one? I have never experienced of doing that before, so I cannot talk about it. And also, is it engaging, right? And also, is it inclusive? So this one, I think, is very important because we have a lot of students uh, in the classroom. So for some topics, maybe most of them can talk about it, but for example, for uh, families, uh, uh, for some topics, for example, uh, about food, about culture, maybe uh, some students don't have any experience of that. So maybe they cannot talk about it. So we should to, we should design activity or content that uh, is that are inclusive for everyone. So everybody can talk about it. And also uh, number four, is this is it well structured? Because this is a low level class. Without structure, they probably they cannot do anything. And also it is a well scaffolded. So we need to guide our students gradually to achieve the goal. So here is a structure building. So what are the elements or what are we going to, um, to include in the storytelling activity? So uh, for example, the title or do we need a title? Sometimes we do, but most of the time, probably we don't need a title. Our title is the can-do statement. And uh, we have several uh, five Ws. For example, the first one, what is about? So it should be a daily activities that all the students are familiar with. Uh, and the second one is when did it take place? In the past time, uh, in the current time, or in the future? And also place where did it happen? And also who are the characters? So because it's in Chinese too, so most of the time we focus on students uh, this self. Uh, we, sometimes we may create some uh, fictional character, but most of the time they are talking about their their personal experiences, personal uh, stories. And also the reason and the daily activities are the two main activities that I want to focus on. And this is these two things are the indicators to, to, to see if students can achieve the goal finally. And uh, here is the sto story telling map that I created for my students to use. So we can see uh, there are several things in this structure. So um, here there's a Chinese uh, character and also English uh, translation here. So first I provided the time first time, the uh, time two and time three. So those are the three different uh, 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 timings for students to create the language. And also I, I provided some connectors, for example, uh, connectors A, uh, connectors B, because, and also there's a, the fourth time, different timing. So, and then the last one is the connector C. So for the last sentence, and the last sentence is a, uh, Grammar sentence is the today's grammar. That's the key core grammar we we're going to we're going to learn today. So here is the storytelling map or the structure, uh, for telling a story. And also, um, this is the final version of the map uh, of the structure. But before we do this, we I present this to my students. There's there must be a scaffolding process. So uh, I, 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 I see there's, a, for example, the first uh, structure one or scaffolding support uh, one, it's uh, I only provided provided two uh, things here. So it's a first timing and second timing. And then the first time and second time, there's a, there's a comparing uh, relationship. So first one is about uh, before, previously, and the second time is about until now, right now. And then on the right side, it's about, it's another structure, another grammar. So that day we learned this grammar, it's about uh, comparison. So uh, students need to compare different things, either A or B, either or in the uh, in previously uh, their actions and now their actions may be changed. So we need to compare what's going on before and right now. So the first day I asked them to talk about uh, before, uh, what did you like? And not right now, uh, what did you like? 
Is there any change between these two different timing? And can are you able to connect these two different timing using the new grammar and the connector to connect? So the first day we practice a lot for this structure one. And the sec second day, I added uh, new structures here. So I added new uh, information like the different timings and different connectors. And also the second day we learned new uh, new uh, connectors, for example, it's not only, but also. So this is can this also can be used to talk about the reason why I I chose B instead of A after something happened. So this is the structure two or the second day activity. And finally, the third day, so we, I present the whole structure here. So um, here, the, the, the last day, the third day, students need to, uh, based on the two previous days uh, activity and practice, they need to connect uh, the old uh, structure and uh, with the new information, the new grammar today. So they can, they are, they, then they need to present a, a, a longer stories about their, their, active, their experience. And then uh, here before I do that, so I need to give the I need to present uh, present a teacher's example. So I use those indicators, those uh, uh, connectors. So I create my own story. So I talk about uh, previously I I like to wear H and M, and now I switch to Uniqlo, and then why I made this change. And then uh, we did this like uh, several times uh, following the GRR pro procedure. And then I, I students uh, have a basic idea uh, of what's going on and how to use the, the, the structure. And then students, uh, will, I will assign students into groups. And so they will, uh, they will practice this by themselves. And then here's a student's example of, of, uh, of this, uh, their own story. So this student, student talked about previously, uh, she uh, liked Gucci and now she changed to Prada because she saw uh, Kim Kardashian uh, wears Prada, Prada and she thought that looks amazing. So that's why she made this decision changing. And also we can see this student used uh, all the, the timings, all the connectors and also the last, the last underlying sentence is uh, was the, the grammar we, we studied today. And then she finally achieved that goal. And then the sec second example is students uh, talking about entertainment, uh, entertaining activities. So about uh, she switched Netflix uh, to uh, Disney Plus because she saw a, a uh, Emmy Award movie on Disneyland, uh, Disney Plus. And she, 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 she thought that was so cool. And that's why she uh, switched to Disney Plus. And then she gave reasons uh, because uh, she, uh, because A, and therefore she switched to Disney Plus. And then she used like a one, two and three uh, grammar in this sentence, in this uh, narration, storytelling narration, and all the, the timing indicators as well, the connectors as well. So uh, because of the time, so I time is limited, so we don't have time to practice, but now I want to talk about the do's and don'ts of creating this activity. So uh, the students, when we create this story, so because the storytelling is a huge uh, topic, a uh, huge theme. So I only pick uh, a, a, a piece of the, of the whole story. So I, I didn't ask the students to, to tell about the plot. So uh, from day one to day, uh, day two or the whole process, I only ask my student to, 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 uh, to grab some key information and then combine those together and then to make a whole narration. So it's, which is, uh, sounds like a intermediate mid level with connectors uh, uh, or presented as in a whole paragraph level. And also uh, the, the story can be true or may not be true. So they can create a fictional story as well. And then we need to reflect students' current proficiency level. If it's the, the requirements too high, they're not able to, to achieve that. If it's too, too low, too easy, maybe students feel like it's not that interesting to do. And also it must be related. And uh, we need to teach the vocabulary and the grammar first. Those are the foundation structures of everything. And then uh, the instructor, the teacher, must uh, tell the story, create the story first to see if the native speaker are able to uh, create the story. If the native speaker, they cannot, then students will probably will, won't do that as well. And also the teacher needs to uh, give positive feedback 
focus on the strength, the creativity, the content, for example, especially the grammar accuracy and the use of the learned vocabulary. And uh, also the, the teacher needs to manage the timing because if it's too long, students may, may get lost. If it's too short, students may don't have enough time to finish and also the don'ts. So I think this activity should not designed to increase students cognitive, cognitive load because they can uh, pro they can process the limited information at one time. So we should not include too many information on this activity and also don't overcomplicate it. Keep it light and fun. Just uh, use maybe several grammar or maybe some uh, familiar vocabularies for them to do. And also uh, don't just let students to retell the story. At the end of the story, we need to ask students in the comprehension chat questions to, 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 to uh, make sure everybody are active listening of other students' uh, uh, storytelling. And also uh, don't correct students' errors while they are retelling a story. If you correct them, so they might get lost. So when they finish, we can correct or we can have a summary of their uh, storytelling. And the last one is don't judge. It doesn't matter is how good or how bad, as long as students can use those grammar and vocabularies to talk, then we, we think they are doing their job and they, they are achieving the, 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 the goal of, uh, start of telling a story. So uh, yeah, that's, the, that's my presentation today. Thank you, uh, Sean, for um, your presentation on storytelling and for giving us all of these tools uh, to maybe implement um, such activity in our class. So um, I will open the session to questions. And so feel free to ask any question that you have. Uh, Laurie? Yeah, I just had a question for Xiang for, I like this idea of a storytelling map. Like I even like this concept of the map, right? Because it's something that they're familiar with and they know it's going to guide them somewhere. <clears throat> I'm wondering if you've done this with oral um, output. So have them create the story orally, presentation um, orally instead of written. Or do you notice that doing this sort of storytelling in their writing has any sort of bearing or effect on whether they're able to create sentence level or paragraph level discourse when they're speaking. So are, do the skills somehow, I know they're not going to be transferable, but do you see that it has an effect on their oral proficiency? That's a great question. <laughs> so far, we only uh, train students to to talk on the oral side. We didn't. We we don't have too many uh, chances, opportunities to 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 help our student to uh, practice on written Chinese. So normally what I did is when they finish speaking, when they finish the presentation, then we done for this uh, this section. And then we move on to the different uh, section. So, and, but uh, but I think the, the speaking, the output, the oral way and the written side is completely different. So students can, they can speak very fluently about a topic, but when they write, um, maybe they they can they they, they cannot uh, produce a very fluent writing because of the vocabulary because of the grammar, yeah. So I think um I think um yeah um actually I cannot I I I cannot answer this question. So that's the practice on oral. The training on oral will improve students' writing. So we 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 don't know we don't know. But I think so, maybe they, they it can help. It can it might help. So the examples you showed were actually for oral um, yeah. storytelling. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the written characters that you shared, is that um, oh, that's the, your that's, transcription yeah, of the that's story? That's my transcription of students' uh, output. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Other questions? Uh, hi, um, I have a question to Shang again. So um, you said after the student's storytelling, you um, ask the questions to check the comprehension to the students. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm wondering if you asked the students who are listening, who are not, not speaking, but who are listening um, about their free comments 
you know, mm. not just the comprehension, but what did you think of her story? What did you think of his story? That kind of question. Did you try? Mm, I didn't try. I didn't try. Yeah. What I did is I only asked the comprehension questions, but sometimes I mentioned, so, um, for example, when students finish their st story sharing, students are laughing or they have a different like uh, facial expressions. So mm -hmm. maybe they enjoy or maybe they like their the, the story, but I didn't ask. But I can see from students' face, so they enjoy that or they maybe they, they, they feel like, oh, it's, it's horrible. It's very good. So, but I didn't ask. <laughs> And also ask this question, it may be it's out of the curriculum because uh, mm. if we ask this, student uh, didn't learn that question, didn't know how to answer, probably they, they just don't know how to answer. What I can do is like, do you like it? Or do you, uh, why you like it? Maybe this these very basic questions. Well, the reason why I ask this question is because um, I, when, I have students do some short presentation. I used to not, I'm not doing this lately, but I used to give the paper to the students and write down their comments, either in English or in Japanese. And I learned a lot from the students' comments because mm -hmm. when the students do the presentation, sometimes I don't understand what the presentation was about or what's the gist or what's funny about it. But students actually get them oh. and I learned them from the students comments so yeah if you have time I think it's worth give it a try yeah yeah or students they may have their own language because they're their their generation they have their own culture so <laughs> probably we don't know but they they know it so yeah Is they mostly have their own references also sometimes, you know, when I bring in some of my references, they're just like, I don't really know what you're talking about. So that's, that's probably true with us listening to their, um, their stories or yeah. Mm -hmm. Laurie, did you have a question? Yeah, I was gonna say, and speaking of references, like how interesting that two different presentations talk brought in Taylor Swift into the mm -hmm. conversation, right? And so, um, I don't know, it'd be interesting to have like cross language collaborations here because the the language our students speak, the cultural language that they speak is something that we are probably no longer tapped into mm -hmm. as much, right? And so, um, I don't know, just found that interesting. And I wonder if there's a way to, you know, collaborate and connect across languages to create these activities that tap into our students' cultural references. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also thought that was really interesting that all of our presentations today somehow also dealt with text or, you know, some way of using, even with music, with Jackie. Um, Jackie, do you ever take into consideration the musical aspect of the song or just the lyrics when you do your um your activities um i usually just focus on lyrics and um and yeah mainly lyrics um the actual like composition or musicality of the song i haven't really done into and i i don't have i don't know like i don't have a lot of background in that so it'd be probably difficult for me but um yeah i mean i would be open to expanding it you know and and um, I mean, the fun part obviously is watching the video and working with that. The students like to do that. So that's definitely kind of the more fun part, but I don't focus as much on the actual music and, you know, right. composition, but. Do you also use the images from the videos, um, it, when you do the, um, the post listening or the, the comprehension of the, of the song? So do you compare how the images might or might not, uh, you know, match with some of the lyrics because sometimes you know videos music videos yeah. sometimes are just can be very creative and, and yeah hard to connect to the to the actual lyrics of the yeah song. that's actually really interesting I actually would like to do that that's that sounds like a really good like kind of um thing to add to that that collaborative part um because we do look at the video and we talk about the video and the images in the video but to actually have them um you know use the images for mm -hmm. something could be interesting as well yeah yeah we oui, sure. 
I have a question for Jacqueline. Um, mm -hmm. Will you ask your student to read the lyrics together? Like uh, to read a poem in the class? Like to read out loud or anything? Yeah, read it out. Um, I usually don't. I have them read it to themselves and kind of do it, use it like a reading comprehension like they would on an exam, you know, where they're reading it. And then, um, but it could be interesting actually because it could help with, um, you know, pronunciation for one. <laughs> Um, kind of flow. And it's true, we really don't practice reading out loud very much in the language. And I noticed the few times that I do have them read something out loud, it's very difficult for them. So mm -hmm. that would definitely be something that would be that could practice kind of like it goes along with what you're doing with your storytelling. It's like so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the reason I ask because uh, the Chinese songs, lyrics, mm -hmm. it's really different when you read it. And when you say it and when you yeah. read it, it's the tone is everything is different. So I was wondering. Yeah. Um, yeah, it probably would be a helpful exercise to do that. Um, especially when if they rhyme or if you know, and then mm -hmm. the students try to rhyme and um I have them read their lyrics. So like when they do when they write their lyrics, and then I have them read their lyrics to the class out loud. And so they kind of do that, and so they kind of show um and I you know like I said <clears throat> I with the presentations I told them if they want to sing it be my guest you know and like I had one guy actually sing um in the future I thought it'd be fun maybe to have them do like a video make almost like a music video or something um as part of like a presentation or they could do now we've been doing these video presentations so I could have them just do like a music video or something I think that'd be kind of fun but then they'd have to sing. I mean, they don't have to sing. They could kind of rap it or whatever if they don't want to sing. But some, I mean, some students play instruments and some students are very musical. So it's like even to have one of them play like a guitar while they do, you know? Um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm thinking about the film festival that just happened with the CLC. And that could also, you know, students yeah. were so creative and they're always, there's always a way to do something Definitely. even though they cannot sing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they can do slam poetry or I don't know if yeah. something, but, um, but it, yeah, it's, it would be very interesting to see how they put images on top of. Yeah, like, no, that's so lyrics. interesting. Yeah. And I do like the idea, Laurie, what you just said about like kind of collaborating between languages for like activities. I think that would be really great. Mm hmm because everyone has such different ideas and they're all, you know, so interesting. <clears throat> I don't know. We should figure that out. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Another committee. <laughs> <laughs> we need more. <laughs> um, Rania, I had a question for you. This is a fourth semester course, right? Where um, you, or, or no? Um, it's actually the third. Oh, it's third semester. Yeah. Uh -huh. So how do you break down... You know, if I'm thinking of our third semester Spanish courses, if we handed them a novel, uh, I don't yeah. so, think they would know what to do. So how do you break this down into chunks that makes it, you know, digestible for students? Yeah, thank you for uh, for the question. So it's um, I have to admit that at the very beginning, the, it's a little bit intimidating for students to face like a um, um, like a classic in the um, in the French literature but we so I reassure them <laughs> that we will be reading um, just a few pages uh, every session and they will have um, at home to read it and to explain uh, the vocabulary in the next session we will start by um, by testing their uh, understanding, by a conversation, by very basic questions, um, uh, what happened um, before, what happened after. Um, and it's um, it's impressive that by the end of the semester, how they have like the facility and they they start to navigate the the novel with a lot of ease. Um, it's it's kind of um, a stretch for them uh at the in it's like very satisfying for a professor to see like how they were like afraid oh professor are we reading a chapter per session per day um but um at the big at the at by the end of the semester they're very um very proud of themselves um that they did it it's it's challenging especially that we are dealing with a philosophical notions like the absurd and by the end we touch a little bit to the existentialism so um it's scary but it's very um it's very passionate when we link it um to these um 
cultural references and we um yeah we 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 try to understand it with a, in a very basic um language hmm. yeah and do you have another textbook or is that your principal text in the in the course do you have like a traditional sort of language uh textbook yeah, we do. So we split the semester in two. The first part is we're reading um, short texts and like we have like this um, reading comprehension. And then we move to the novel in the second part of the semester. Mm. Uh, and we also have activities to do and some exercises and some writing activities um, and essays in the textbook. So yeah, we have both and we alternate between between both. Yeah, if I can just add also this text, it's very repetitive. So at some point, students, at first, it's scary as hell for them <laughs> because it's a very, very, you know, yeah, very There's... heavy novel. But it, because the actions of the main character are always the same, at some point, <laughs> they just pick them up and it becomes easier, I guess. That's uh, so the oh, start to predict sorry they even start to predict what's coming mm -hmm. next because it's very repetitive it's very um he doesn't change so yeah they get very familiar with the atmosphere of the novel with the character of the with the personality of the character so yeah thank you <laughs> um so the students discussion you introduced sounds like very um kind of deep and complicated to me compared to my Japanese three students. So I'm wondering if you did those discussion in English or in French? Um, we try to do it entirely in French. But again, I try to use very simple vocabulary, very basic. Um, yeah, and I'm also repeating and I'm also negotiating, like trying to say the same idea in like different ways. So just to make sure that everyone gets the, get what we we're talking about and they're like involved in the discussion. Great, thank you. Other questions? I might have just one question because everything that we've heard um, was very interesting. And, and you know, and, and John was talking about the scaffolding. So my personal issue is always timing. I don't know how to, you know, time myself. And these activities that you've all presented um, seem to take a lot of time. So I was just wondering, um, and from what I understood, it's over several days. It's not just one session. Am I correct? And for Zhang, it's over several days that you that you scaffold your activity. So how do you manage your your like how many sessions, for example, does it take you? Um, so do you have students how do students remember what they did the previous session um so at the end they have that full story with you know all the elements that you are require, requiring in the story yeah good, very good question actually uh the last uh structure with everything that's the the whole the longest one and for the first two so the first one is the shortest one so i only need you to tell me uh something happened uh sorry sorry something uh what did you do before and now what did you do now and then why you made this change and what's the difference between the previous one and this one that's it that's it uh, no more because this is very short very uh very light so students can, are able to handle that so when they have this foundation the next day so i increase like longer stuff like a more timing more connectors for them to 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 build a longer story then the first day so the second day they can add like uh, two or more grammar structures like new learned grammar structure to their story so based on the first day's uh, expression uh, performance and the second day they feel like oh today I only need to add two or more sentences or more structures based on my yesterday's performance so they, this uh, for them they won't feel like uh, too difficult at all and then the third day, so based on the first and second day's uh, performance, so I, I only need add one structure. So that's the one, the structure I, we learned that day. So because the first two days, they already have the uh, foundation to perform, to, to practice. So on the third day, they only need to do is just to add one more section for 
uh, based on their previous uh, performance or previous stories. So this is a, a gradual movement. I think uh, they they feel they, they they won't feel too difficult to 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 do. And so they they remember the previous information that they gave, like the previous class. Um, or do you can they you know add this the the sentences mm -hmm. or use the structure that you want them to use, but in different with a different context or different information? Yeah, different context, different okay. information. I think they don't need to remember, memorize the story because okay. different topic, different uh, uh, content, they have different stories. The only thing okay. they need to yeah. do is to remember how to use the structures mm -hmm. to, to tell a, a uh, connected paragraph. Okay, so the structures are the main. Yeah. What you what you work on more than the yeah. information. And then the, the, the big story is, another topic that you bring in and they have to use all the structures yeah i see and um and, and jackie you also do it over several days or um <clears throat> well usually um usually i try to do an activity i try to do a whole activity in one class i usually mm -hmm. have two hour classes so it's a little easier like i'm not not the whole two hours but like we'll take right. like one half of the class to kind of do the whole thing mm -hmm. since it since it does encompass a bunch of difference it's not just we you know we we focus we do the grammar there we do whatever we're supposed to do that day you know from the syllabus like I do it in that activity mm -hmm. um, if it's a 50 minute class it's a little harder um, we have run out of time where we didn't get to maybe the song lyrics which of course is the fun part um, but you could always like cut stuff out too you don't have to do the whole thing it's always um, you know, if you wanted to kind of narrow it down, you don't have to do maybe as many questions afterwards. Um, you know, it depends on what you really want to focus on and what you want to get out of the day. Um, if there's really a grammar topic I need to focus on, like that's what I would focus on. If there's, if it's more that I we're doing vocabulary and it's kind of, then I'll focus more on that. So, you know, you can kind of play around with it and not do the entire thing. Right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's hard in a 50 minute class. Definitely. Um, I usually have a little more time. Yeah. Um, I haven't done it in a 50 minute class yet. So I'd probably have to <laughs> shorten it if I had to do that. Yeah. 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 And maybe it could be a running theme, right? Throughout. Yeah. Throughout the yeah. Week, we could definitely example, do it throughout and, the chapter. Yeah. yeah. As well. And, and <clears throat> add a little bit. So it's one song per unit or I do one song per unit. Yeah. So it was like one activity. So it's not every day. Uh, right. it's, it, it was one per chapter. So, um, you know, so like I showed the one for the social issues, but then we did like, um, we did arts and culture and we did the environment and we mm -hmm. did um, uh, the house and the home and sports and stuff. So with the sports, we talked about the world cup, you know, right. and stuff like that. So right. it just depended on the chapter. Some topics are more heavy than others. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. and I think it, it brings also some regular regularity to students. If, you know, mm -hmm. like each chapter, each unit they have. They know they're going to have a song and yeah. work on something like yeah, that. Yeah, and I told them at the beginning, we did like a survey, like, have you ever used Spanish music in class? Mm -hmm. In the Spanish class, have you ever done this? And so they kind of knew we were going to do it. Yeah. Great. So that helped, yeah. Perfect. Um, any other comments or questions? No? Well, um, thank you um, so much to our presenters today for your very, very interesting um, presentations and all the information that you've given us. Uh, I wanted to thank also um, on behalf of the committee, uh, the outreach committee, the CLC outreach committee, uh, I wanted to thank all of you for coming and joining us for this uh, last session of the semester. And I hope we'll see you um, again for other series that we, we will think about or you know, organize. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Thank and you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and, you know, enjoy the last week of, you know, non-teaching, but, you know, everything else that we have to do before the real end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.